welcome back to another short tutorial. Today we're doing short fur and I've got a tiny little piece of paper here. It's the Fabriano Artistico HP 140 pound paper that I always use and recommend that a lot of you try out and, and see if you like it. So I'm using this paper and I'm also using a selection of Pablo pencils and I'm just replicating a little patch of brown fur. Um, it's not from a specific portrait or, or a reference photo, it's literally just a patch of brown fur that I have worked on previously um, to experiment with a few techniques um, and I enjoyed working on this particular patch so you can use absolutely any fur that you want for this tutorial, you can use any colour. I've given you a few tutorials on colour picking now um, and using your pencils so you can use any colour fur that you desire as long as it's fairly short like uh, hair from a Labrador or hair on a dog's face is usually quite short like on um, my Border Collie for example he's got short hair, cats that have short hair, absolutely anything so just got a little square all I'm going to do is show you the layering process which I would go through and then add the final hairs on top and then I will show you some of the strokes that I use to create some of those layers on the side here. So what I'm actually going to do first off is just divide my little piece of paper into areas where I'm going to make the marks and then the area where I'm actually going to draw the fur for you. Okay so I'm just going to rule off little line just down here. This side will be for the marks and this one will be for the actual fur. So first of all like I said I'm going to be using um, fur from a brown dog. Um, it's a brown Labrador like a really chocolatey rich orangey. So I'm just going to pick out some colours that I am seeing in his fur and then I will lay some layers down. So I'm going to start with um, creams, um, some light yellows and I've also got new pencils here which I'm going to be indulging into using as well but mainly just um, shades of brown, all these shades, I might not necessarily use all of these shades and it doesn't really matter what shades they are because you might not use a brown dog but just all of these shades so there I'm going to limit myself to this colour palette just shades of orange brown and a few dark pencils in there I have the lighter colours for the first layers and then I have the darker colours for the topmost layer where I'll be adding some of those defined fur lines in so First things first, for my first layer I actually lay down some cream because it's quite a warm toned dog and I use cream as a base layer for that. So I have my reference picture to this side today because um, I'm working from an actual photograph or a portrait which I have drawn and then had a print made so I'm working from that. Um, so layering down this first layer using the cream, all I do is check the direction of the fur like I always tell you to do and then you just layer down using shading technique holding the pencil as far back as you can and just lay that down. I'm not doing a large patch of fur, it's literally just going to be about this big. So the type of mark that I'm using for that, you might not be able to see with this colour so we'll just use a darker colour holding the pencil right back at the end here and just shading lightly in the direction of the fur just like this just back and forth so it's just hatching not cross hatching, cross hatching would be going the other way as well you're just hatching going in one direction so this is the mark that I would use for the base layer So. The next thing I would do is use the next colour up, which would be, for me, this light lemon yellow. Use exactly the same mark 
that we use for the base layer, so this hatching shading technique, and just go over this whole layer with this colour, just to darken it up. basically all you do. So now I've got two layers with this type of mark. And let me just write by this that this is hatching. So we've got two layers and those two layers are the cream and the lemon yellow. And you can probably just about see them on the um, video. Very very light colours. So what you do next is you go to your next lightest colour and in my case this is going to be an apricot colour from the Pablo and all I'm going to do is just shade this all over and then we're going to go over with the darker colours so this, these are the three light colours that I'm laying down and again I'm layering this in the same way as these base layers just hatching and this will just help darken up this whole area with this layer I'm not necessarily going all over, I'm leaving a few spots free so that those undertones, those uh, that cream and that lemon yellow shine through a little bit. But now you can see I've got quite a nice rich light colour going on. And there's three layers down so far. So now we get to the darker colours and this is where it will all start to become a little bit exciting and this is where your short fur will really start to develop. So, I need to decipher which is my next colour and I think I'm going to use this ochre colour, it's a nice light sort of mid, light to mid yellow. So I'm just going to layer this one in exactly the same way with this base layer hatching here. But this time I'm making sure that I look at my reference photo and see where this colour actually needs to go because there are some lighter patches showing through. So whether those lighter patches showing through I'm going to avoid that area with this colour. And when you start to layer your pencils down like this you will find where you have perhaps pushed a little bit or the pencil has pushed a little bit harder onto your paper you will automatically generate these type of lines that come up and it sort of looks like fur and that's from the build up of wax and that's from the build up of bloom in your pencil so you will automatically see that it will start to generate these lines for you and you can use those later as a guide for doing your fur lines. It doesn't always do it this way but majority of the time when I'm drawing a portrait I automatically get these lines and that's due to the variation of pressure when you're holding your pencil quite far back you tend to vary the pencil pressure or you can vary it yourself you can push a little bit harder to create those lines already um, but you're still using this hatching technique so all I'm doing is just shading where I need to on my reference photo leaving this little area a little bit lighter because the shape of his um, face is creating a light patch there, his bone structure so and if I need to darken a few areas to make a richer tone I can just add a, full, um, a fifth layer I should say just to make it a little bit darker, a bit richer I've got all those tones showing through now and I'm still working in the direction of the fur. So, there are fourth and fifth layers going down. So, deciphering the next colour, which is most likely going to be this, which is now turning more towards the orange shade of things. This is hazel, and I'm just going to do exactly the same, just using this hatching technique, shading technique, and I'm the further through the layers that I get, the further down I'm holding a pencil, and the further down you hold your pencil will allow you more control with the pressure, so I'm now sort of in the mid range layers, and I'm holding my pencil in the middle, and I can vary the pressure as and when I need to. I'm still using exactly the same shading technique, that hatching line 
and just shading all over. Building up those tones here and there where it's a little bit darker on my reference photo. Just pushing a little bit harder with this or going over and doing a subsequent little layer just over a certain area just to highlight where those darker patches are and uh, if you do that you'll be able to find them with your subsequent layers of the dark colour it will just be so much easier for you so use a little bit more pressure where there is a little bit of a darker patch not too much pressure because then you will eat away at the tooth of your paper but just enough so that you can define where those darker areas are with your next few layers. So there's our sixth and seventh, seventh layers there. So these are the colours that I've used at the moment. Hopefully you can see all of them shining through. I can, but whether or not you can see it, I have uh, a trained eye to look for these things. I've been doing it quite a long time. If you've been drawing portraits for what, quite a while, you should be able to, you will automatically be able to see all of the colours that shine through. It's the same when looking at your reference photo and determining colours to use. So, next colour, colours I'm going to use, because I can't decide which one's lighter or which one's darker, I'm going to use brown, ochre and cinnamon. And I think I'm actually going to use the cinnamon first because it's a bit more of an orange tone. Um, so I'm just going to add this and now I am really starting to come down towards the end, the lead of my pencil and I'm beginning to put some more even pressure through my pencil to create some deeper layers. So using exactly the same technique and I'm just making sure again that I put a little tiny bit more pressure through my pencil when I'm going over those darker areas. But at the moment, it is all shading technique. Where I'm pushing a little bit harder, you can actually see that it will start to define little patches of fur. And this is the basis of how I work. So, you can see I've got four little pockets of fur going all the way around here. Filling in the rest, shading it all in, blending it all nicely. And that's that layer done. I'm going to move straight on to the next layer. And this is with the brown ochre pencil. I'm going to do exactly the same. Just overlaying this colour with this shading, hatching technique there. shading that one all over even in that lighter patch you can still see that it's a little bit lighter and that's that done so now we move on to a different type of mark and some deeper richer colors so I'm going to be using this chestnut and then just ordinary brown and then we're going to use sepia and charcoal gray and these are what's going to make some of those really deep tones and some individual fur lines so I'm going to start with the lightest of the four and that's this chestnut colour. So with this, what I'm going to do is start to just start off with this hatching technique which we've used for these base layers. And then once I've done a little bit of this hatching technique, I will go over and I'll start to use a line technique. And the kind of line that I'm going to use is a tapered line and this is where you start with hard pressure where your hair starts on your reference photo and then as you go along the hair and towards the end you gradually lift the pressure off your pencil. So to make this mark I'm going to put it on here for you. You start hard and then lift the pressure so it fades. It's not fading to nothing but you can definitely tell that the base of the hair here is darker and it gradually gets lighter. You don't want to do it all the way hard pressure. That's the wrong kind of line to do. It will make it look so wiry and so unnatural. You really want to do this tapered line where you just start hard, you make a point with your pencil, 
push down hard and then gradually lift the colour, the pencil. And you can vary the length of these and you can even do some soft, you just do it the same sort of way, just use a softer pressure and then go even lighter. But you can really vary the amount of pressure and starting pressure and end pressure. These are the type of marks that you want to do. These are not the type of marks that you want to do. So you want to do these, not these. This is a tapered line and these are just ordinary lines. So I'm just going to put lines and a sad face because you don't want to do those type of lines for fur. If you have a type of fur that requires that type of line, that's good, use it. Normally you don't find harsh lines like this in fur, they're tapered, tapered lines like this. You start off with quite a hard pressure and then lift your pencil as you're going towards the end of the fur line. So I'm going to first of all do this hatching layer, then I'm going to go over with these tapered lines. So I'm only going to add these dark colours where it needs it on this reference photo. So on these dark areas that I've predefined here is where this colour is going to go. So I'm going to add the colour all over these four patches. And I'm deliberately leaving a few lighter patches just so you can see how I would shade and how I would layer. So. It doesn't really matter how sharp your pencil is at the moment, the sharpness of the pencil is really required on the very last layer when you're adding some very, very dark lines. You need some super fine lines with that. So that's where you'll really need a sharpened pencil. You can use a blunt pencil for these, but if you've got quite small hairs, then I would recommend sharpening. But if your hairs are quite broad, then it doesn't really matter. Now we're going to add some of these tapered lines here. Just going to add a few in, so you're just going to start tapering them, just putting them here and there. Um, using a harder pressure on the dark areas, and I'm actually putting some of these tapered lines into the lighter areas as well, but I'm using a lighter pressure so it blends in more, so it's not quite so striking. So, using hard pressure. On the dark parts, I'm going to add those in first, and then on the lighter areas, I'm using light tapered strokes. Now, when I'm doing these tapered strokes, I'm not doing them all in the same direction. I'm not doing them like I'm counting uh, on a bar chart type thing we used to do in primary school. I'm not doing them like that. When I'm doing these lines, and I'm just going to use hard pressure so it's easy to see, I am doing them so that they are slightly angled, so they're not straight, all of them. They're slightly angled, and each one is different. So, make sure that you angle them so they're a bit more natural like this. Overlap them, it's fine. You always find overlapping hairs. What you don't find is hairs doing this. You don't find hairs doing that at all. They're going to be like this and they're going to overlap and they're going to sway. And some are going to be a little bit longer than the others. Some are going to be a little bit shorter. So vary your length of your line. Keep it quite short but vary the length of your line and vary the direction. So it ends up looking like this, not like this. And again, I'm going to do the same. You want them like this, not like this. This, these are angled lines, and these are just straight lines, and you don't want those, don't want those. So, add in a few last hairs, you can see it looks very hairy, very furry. Next I'm just going to use my next colour now, I'm not going to do any shading, any hatching this first mark with this colour. This colour I'm just going to do these tapered curved lines. So 
going to work in the darker areas first. And I'm not adding as many of these as I would the previous colour. On every consistent layer, I'm getting gradually less fur lines. So the, the least amount of fur lines will be created with the charcoal grey, but the most amount of fur lines will be created with this chestnut colour. So, just add a few in the light fur. And then move on to the next colour which is one of the dark colours so going to really not use very many with this colour I don't want it too dark this is the sepia colour so doing exactly the same doing the tapered angled lines here and this will darken up these dark patches so you really don't need many at all see how dark those dark bits are and then we can add a few very very light ones into the existing fur, the light fur and what we can do if we really need to we can shade a little bit over the top just to darken it if we need to and that will tone down the rest of those lines as well. just help blend it all a little bit better. So now we move on to our last layer and we're going to use exactly the same, these tapered angled lines. I'm going to use very very little of them and I'm actually going to sharpen this up so I get some nice sharp defined lines in there. Nice and sharp. So what we need to do is just add a few of these, exactly the same in the same fur direction alternating the directions so it looks quite natural don't want it looking like this like um, all I can describe this type of line as is um, minion hair if you know what minions are from Despicable Me and the minion film that's what that's like you don't want hair you don't want fur like a minion head so That's pretty much it. You can see how it's created a quite a nice soft furry look. You've got some lighter patches, you've got some darker patches. Obviously if you want even darker patches what you can do is you can go back over with your um, a bit lighter colours so you can go over with the brown and the chestnut and you can just shade them up, you can add some purples in there, you can add more layers over your final layers of that fur just darken up areas, tone them up, add some wild colours, add some purples, add absolutely anything you want. As long as you don't actually lose all of that fur definition which you've done, you can add anything over the top. If you do start to lose fur definition, just add some fur lines back in with those dark colours and it will be okay for you. So, this is the result and these are the three kinds of strokes that I've used. For all the base layers, for all the light colours, up until I use my four um, fur lining colours, which were these four, I used this, this technique, this hatching technique. And that's mainly the technique that I use for a majority of my portraits, um, and especially if it's short hair, if it's long hair, I definitely use this technique, but definitely for every single base layer, on every single portrait is used using this hatching technique here. Then you move on, once you've got a few base layers down, you move on to these tapered lines, we start adding in all the fur detail and fur texture, and then you also angle them as well. You want to make sure that they're angled, tapered. You don't want straight lines, just straight, heavy lines. You want tapered, so you've got variation in pressure between bottom and the top of that fur and then you want the variation in the, in the direction of that fur so you want them crossing and overlapping each other going absolutely everywhere. You don't want them all in the same parallel. You don't want them like that at all. That's why it's got a sad face next to it because you don't want that. That's basically it for this little tutorial. Hopefully this has helped you when I describe in future tutorials when I'm saying use the fur technique. 
This is the fur technique, these tapered angle lines. That's what I mean as fur technique and this is what I mean as a base layer. Just using some hatching, not cross hatching, just ordinary hatching back and forth. Hopefully this has helped um, and I will see you in the next short technique video which will be next Friday. So have a great weekend guys and I'll see you later. Bye!